Hi, Kate. Hi, Dan. Why is this? <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm really good. Uh, I got a tattoo yesterday. <gasps> my first. Let us see. It's not this is a podcast, first, but. Can I? <laughs> if you're watching, that looks fucking banging. Um, it's not actually my first tattoo, but it is my first tattoo by someone who isn't my friend having a go. Because there's also a half, a half finished shark on my leg. It's <laughs> been oh, there for the around shark. fifteen years. <laughs> for everyone, was it painful? No, it was a it was a, a hand poked tattoo. Nice. Uh, it was a bit sore and stingy, but was actually quite therapeutic and quite nice. And the process? How long were we talking? Two and a half hours. Not bad. Yeah. Not not super quick. <laughs> but no, it's good. It was uh, so yeah. That's my life in a nutshell for the last twenty four hours. <laughs> how about you? What been up to? Are we the most boring people? Probably. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like now we're in our 30s. That's okay, right? I'm so not- let me start again. I guess I just smashed loads of drugs. <laughs> yeah. And uh, just broke something for no reason. Yes. Same, actually. Yeah. And then the, I had a call from the press and they were like, can we can we write about it? And I was like, yes. fuck off. Yep. Brainwashed. Brainwashed. Oh my God, brainwashed. I love brainwashed so much. Yeah. Me too. I'm really happy it's out in the world. Yeah. Like, it, I like how like weirdly dramatic it is is like it's got like a country flair almost yeah. and i i remember sending it to you and i can't remember when you sent me this video back but you had like made an entire guitar part and it was like it just went up a different level like i loved it so mm, much that's and very kind of you to say i they, i vividly remember spending far too long maybe like four hours straight just tinkering until i ha- found something that was worthy of the song because <laughs> it's such a nice song and i was just like i could so easily just fuck this up by strumming or just like busying it up and actually yeah spending some time being like what actually does the song need and i don't know what i think we jammed together actually before before then and i'd done some sort of weird country thing Diddling, yeah, yeah diddling. and that was all like, i didn't really do anything else it was decent but i remember being like that actually works really well over the song so to go away and do some homework which actually was a lot of this record was me taking what you had done and being like how can i embellish it or do nothing like I, it wasn't the type of songs where i could just be like i'll play what you're playing or i'll play do you know what i mean i had to really think about what actually fit in there because you take up quite a lot of space with the songwriting because you do you write like your lyrics and your melodies and the way you play the notes and stuff all of that fills a space because you want the percussion the finger picking you want the chord sequences that you can sing to and suddenly i'm like this is amazing. It's so good that where is there room on this track? And it's a good challenge as like a, as a sort of songwriter to go away and be like, okay, like if it doesn't sound good, don't, you're not, you're not playing on it. <laughs> basically. Well, um, you met, you met the challenge. Like thank you. it, it, I think that song would be like subpar without your guitar part. That's very kind. I think the song is it. such a good song. Well, thanks Dan. Um, yeah. Just an amazing talk. Talk about um, what does the song, what is about? What does it mean to you? So Brainwashed is essentially about um, going through life, relearning over and over again that that you don't need external things to be happy type thing. And the universe will keep taking things away from you that you really love to remind you that you're, you're okay on your own. And mm-hmm. you were okay before that thing, before you had it, and you're, you're going to be okay without that thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so hence the chorus goes every time you go in awakening because you you have to you are, are trying to remember that or remind yourself of it every single day that yes i can really enjoy this but it's all temporary and i realize that's quite a bleak way to look at things but it's it's kind of buddhist in a way like the whole life is suffering type thing like i like to kind of constantly remind myself that this is all temporary because I get attached so easily and so quickly. And I guess I've experienced enough loss now to kind of have a a fear of it. Obviously, we all have that fear, but I have a fear of it. So in kind of like battling that fear, I'm trying to tell myself like, yes, you can enjoy this, but it's going to be taken away one day and you can't find yourself in it. You can't find your happiness in this. This is just an attachment type thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, 100%. And it's really interesting you've managed to pen it into a song. And you said about the Buddhist thing and to broadly talk about the record is that a lot of it has that feeling. It's a lot of you assimilating the concepts of life and the pro- the process of trauma and grief and all the, the happiness and the sadness and the yin and yang of it all, the idea that you need it in order to to grow from it um and this song is a really good example of that 
Yeah, I, I don't think we've actually ever said this anywhere yet, but that's kind of the whole um, idea for the album, actually. It's kind of split into two halves, and the interlude is a song called Lose It All, because that is what needs to happen for you to kind of get to the second part, where you can have awakenings and more like growth and understanding that you don't need all those things that you thought you needed. And the first half of the album is much more kind of like human longing like why does this happen why is it me why is this so hard um and i love it so much for that reason because even though you know we wrote it quite a long time ago now i find myself listening to the songs when we're promoting them or singing them or practicing for this show next week i find myself singing them and being like oh yeah like i'm reminding myself through the songs which is really really cool and another reason why i wanted to write them because i thought if I can learn this and I can put it to some music, maybe someone somewhere will listen to this one day and be like, oh yeah, let's, I don't want to get too brainwashed into thinking that I need this person to be happy because mm -hmm. I absolutely don't, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, 100%. It's, um, I mean, I've got nothing to add to that. <laughs> that was like so perfectly summarized. Um, <laughs> but you did just mention the show next week and I would love to talk a little bit about the idea of coming back into gigging again, which is something as a band we sort of actively stopped doing. Yes. Um, weirdly, at an apt time because we did our last ever tour in like March or May 2019, I think it was. It was only four shows. Um, and, and yeah, I think we both, after that, were like, you know what? This doesn't fulfill us in the way it should do, or at least in this project it doesn't. Um, let's just not worry about that for now. And um, what's been really beautiful is writing these songs with you and seeing the joy you get from playing them and we both get from playing them together. And it was that, that realization of being like, we can just play these songs at the shows. Like this is our, it's our control. And so I, and I, we've just been rehearsing all day long. And I think now playing those together, even that we had a moment earlier that we were sort of like, you know, oh, being in a band is really tough and social media and everything's fucking shit. I and mean, when we played the set again, I was just like, oh, but this feels good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this part feels really good, you know? It's so. always a returning to that, isn't mm. it? And yeah. I'm and kind we of need a, that. Yeah, we, <laughs> we desperately do. need yeah, that. That's our like connection is just play the songs together, some old, some new, whatever, but like play them how you want to play it because instantly you re you're just so reminded of like what it is we do it for. That is, is the just, magic. Yeah. yeah, and I I never thought I would be reminded of that magic through playing live shows, as you know, like mm. I I just have stage fright. It's just not my my uh, forte really is like, you know, being a performer or a front woman of a band. That is, I mean, if you know me, that's just not my thing, which is comical considering I went to university to do theater and performance. Mm -hmm. Like how un me is that? Um, but I love this album so much and it would be a disservice to it if I didn't play it live and it didn't get to kind of realize itself in that type of capacity because mm -hmm. i feel like especially with the show next week um i mean i imagine we'll put this out like very very soon so if you uh, don't know we have a show on the 14th of june a wednesday at the courtyard theater with sivu um and we're super excited about it but it's more of an intimate show and these types of songs are like are where they're made mm -hmm. to be sung yeah. do you know what i mean i think we recognize that it was like some of these small clubs that are made for bands and things like we always felt a bit alien in there it's like a dark room there's no atmosphere there's no vibe and we're trying to sort of play a quiet you know give someone a quiet experience and i think um now we're recognizing it. actually there's probably better venues that are fitted to like this incarnation of the project and it'd be great to come and play this venue i mean we could be having a different conversation in the borrowed podcast where we're like actually that was rubbish we hit it yeah but i think it's exciting to go into it and be like we've got to a stage where we're ready to go on stage again and try it again. You yeah, know? I don't know, like, yeah. we didn't think we were gonna get there again, so. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's, I feel like we deserve a pat on the back, you know, like yeah. we've we've come a long way. And actually it's been funny today, like rehearsing for these shows, you kind of get in the same, or you start thinking back to like, whoa, this feels so different because, you know, this is four years ago we were last doing it and we were having lunch and we're both like eating particular things and we're both having like non-alcoholic beers and ciders and we were like, We've changed quite a bit yeah, in the last yeah. four years. Yeah, previously we would have smashed about three bottles of wine by now <laughs> <laughs> and ordered something very, very questionable. I know. And I'm, I'm really happy for us, you know, like mm. we're, we're doing well for ourselves. And 
um hopefully that's going to reflect in our music and the gigs that we play and stuff um but yeah quickly talk about the video yeah the video, the video that you came up with the concept of i mean it's hot it can't really call it a concept brainwashed washing a brain yeah, but it? sometimes thinking that simply is not i had i don't know what i was thinking before that I, I remember being a bit overwhelmed by the task of thinking like what could i you know we've made so many of these now and um as always it's like we only have x amount of money to go x amount of, so it's always tricky to, to think inside a box but i think i needed someone someone to just say like that is as simple as it needs to be someone washing their brain and um and then i was a bit like nah it's not possible like where can we even afford to get a brain prop from but a quick google search <laughs> and you can get this really janky brain hat and i was like Do you know what i reckon actually that would look totally fine <laughs> but put an extra bandage on it all good get my friend to come down Take a shirt off, wash your brain, head off. Well, I think we did it in about 40 minutes. That's so cool. It was cool. so funny because we, it was a place called The Forge in Bristol where I had my 30th birthday actually. It's so funny to watch that music video now. And I'm looking in the corner, it's exactly where I was dancing and now I'm watching someone wash their brain there. <laughs> um, but it's uh, a beautiful place and, and the owner, Silky, was just absolutely did me a solid. I, I texted her like, you know, an hour before I came down saying, is there any chance that no one's in there for an hour? And she was like, just come down, do what you need to do. We're doing some refurb. But what I didn't realize when they, she said they're doing refurb is that there's literal builders like walking through. So I'd literally be like, I'd have the shot ready and then some guy would be needing to get to like the plug socket in the corner. And so we just, we just wait. Like Steven's got his like brain cap on and a sponge <laughs> and the guy walks the corner and like literally like it, like that are on the right side of me. There's like two builders. <laughs> you just don't know in the video. <laughs> at all. It's all so funny. I'm having this, you know, really dramatic thing of this guy washing his brain. That's amazing. Um, so yeah, so, so we had to get it done really fast because I was in their way and they weren't super like the owner was really stoked for me to come and do it but i don't think she realized how much i was going to get in the way because i wanted to use the whole length of the room oh shit and uh, and so uh, yeah and the the builders there were a bit like this is problematic so i was like right we'll get three shots and we'll call it there i mean it looks fucking so cool it looks you. eerie and i just want to say thank you for always doing such an amazing job for thank us you. video wise like i have got the pick of the litter with dan broadley as my as my band mate like <laughs> i really do have it quite quite good there so thank you very much for all the work you put in it's very kind thank you um and yeah i can't really remember anything recording wise about brainwashed i mean it's a very simple song um in the sense of like i think we just played in the kitchen together again just both of us i do remember playing it at the same time because there's so many little like guitar like like we have to feel it together that's yeah song, don't you can we? hear like, it's like the a dings jewel. of me messing it up but like that's because we just did it in one take rather yeah. than like finessing it yeah um, that's the beauty of it i think totally and onto onto tape again as well so it was very very live and then rick had that kind of cool like train track kind of like you know um i guess he was using hot rods the brushes or something yeah um, i remember hearing that in the control room being like i um, am obsessed i i couldn't believe that that was our music mm. I just, it just felt so it felt like we it was fully us but also a really mature version of us that maybe yeah. even at the time i wasn't ready for so when we got there i was like oh <gasps> This is like incredible. Yeah, it kind of felt akin to like, you know, we like really, really like those last two or three Sufjan records. And yes. I think having a song that felt like, oh, certainly doesn't sound like a Sufjan Stevens song, but it feels in the world of that, you know. And I think, did you do the piano on this one? Yeah, it's kind of like really random piano parts. Like, yeah. I absolutely love that. I I wanted it to kind of like sound like it was raining piano. That yeah. was the that was the quote. A brief. Um <laughs> Yeah. And it just just really, really sporadic, random notes. But mm. I think it really, really adds to the vibe. Yeah. And I think actually, because we when we came in to do the album and obviously we'll talk more about this later on. But I think um, there was a big we wanted other players because we didn't real, really feel that confident in our own piano playing abilities. Like we can both absolutely play piano and you're much better than I am. But we remember I remember both thinking like we want this record to be so good. We want someone to come and really play it. And so we had like um, Johan, Johan and Pat came and did some songs and that was great. Like it was really nice to have those players on those tracks. And I think you getting on and doing brainwash suddenly. I was like, wait a minute, we're way overthinking this. Like you can absolutely do the type of piano we think about we, that we want. We thought we had to get other people to play because we're always like, oh, you know, we're we're like block chords or we need like quite structured things. But watching you just like riff and fall off into this ether of like playing, I was like. We don't need other players, really. I mean, it's lovely to have them on the tracks. And I'm yeah. really glad to have shared the experience. Same. But, um, you know, Brainwash is so great because you played and you just, you knew what you wanted on that track and you absolutely nailed it. Like, it was so good. Yeah. yeah. Go Brainwashed. I brainwashed love it so amazing. much. Yeah, and I really hope everyone else likes it as much as we do. We're kind of <laughs> obsessed in it. But um, 
that's the beauty of your writing your own songs that you like i guess yeah and even if not like that is one of probably one of my favorite songs i've ever written mm. like i will stand by brainwash till the day i fucking die yeah, i yeah. love it anyway well thanks kate yeah thanks dan see you um see for you, borrowed see next you for month borrowed, yeah Woo-hoo. cheers